I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Welcome to the Ernest Angley Hour. So glad you could join us today. We have for you good music and singing, and my message for you is something we all deal with, how to rise above life's disappointments. Jesus said we would have tribulation, but the key to victory is the Word of God. I hope this message will bless you in a great way, but first we have the Gloryland Singers. <music> You 
something that should be very common to all of us here. And the theme is how to rise above life's disappointments. Starting scripture, the words of Jesus found in John 16, a promise he gives to his people, but it's one not many people like to claim. In the world ye shall have tribulation, John 16, 33, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Tribulation, disappointments, expect them. Jesus warned they would come. This world is not a heavenly society. It is corrupt with sin and deceit. And the Bible says, that the devil is the prince in power of the air. Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. No, by no means is this a heavenly society. For a child of God, life in this world is spiritual warfare. Warfare is not easy. That's why Paul went on to write in Ephesians 6, listing spiritual armor that every child of God is to wear each and every day. So we must really fully comprehend and come to grips and understand that it's time to reason with God and really temper your expectations for this life. Because everything will not go according to your plan or as you desire. That's just the way it is, no matter how close you live to God. Besides, remember who you are as a child of God. Here, you are a pilgrim and a stranger just passing through. You're seeking, or you're supposed to be seeking, a heavenly country and a city whose builder and maker is God. This world is filled with all kinds of disappointments, Disappointments that come in all shapes and sizes. Disappointments, some not so bad, others severe and terrible. People can disappoint you. Hurt, betrayal, deceit by those you love and trust. Life can be a disappointment for people. When your goals and desires go unrealized and unfulfilled. Many times a person's life will alter the course dramatically and unexpectedly because of circumstances that are unfair and events that are beyond their control. The past can be a disappointment. How often have people come to the point late in life, and they look back, and they're filled with regret, believing they should have lived their life differently, made better choices, 
treated people better. For some, they are disappointed in what they made of their relationship with God and how they treated him as they look back. Maybe it was a lack, a disappointment because of a lack of love and devotion or a lack of service to him when they were able to serve. In the end, disappointed when they come to the end of life's journey that they did not do more in their life to please God and serve Jesus to others. At some time or another, everyone experiences disappointment. And it's important for every child of God to understand how to face them and rise above them victoriously instead of always trying to avoid them or hide from them or just give in and be defeated by them. Children of God have suffered much needlessly because they could not rise above the disappointments in their life. People have failed God because of disappointments. Stepping out of God's will, blaming God, even losing their salvation. You see, disappointments, they can breed discouragement. And that discouragement causes people to lose faith in God or doubt God's love for them. Disappointments can fuel anger and bitterness towards God or other people. A person should never blame God for their troubles. This world is what it is because of sin, the devil, and selfish humanity. Sin is to blame for the sorrows of this life. Sin is why death rules and reigns over this civilization. Because the Bible says death was conceived in sin. So when a loved one dies and goes to heaven, it takes God's love and faith in operation for those loved ones to overcome that disappointment of separation. In such a time, it's important for loved ones to remember it's all because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice at Calvary that their loved one is safe and sound in heaven and that they have an opportunity to see them again one day, never to be separated again. But you must beware of disappointments because they may not cause you to fail God, but if not handled properly, disappointments can cause you to let up on God. And what I mean by that take the heart out of you, and you don't pray as much. You're not eager to spend time in his presence, studying the word, or fasting to draw closer to him. Disappointments can keep you out of the house of God. Disappointments will, can separate you from the family of God all of which, everything I just said, makes you spiritually weaker. Disappointments can contaminate your spirit and mind and rob you of God's peace and joy and love, only to replace that with frustration, fear, despair. Psalm 1830 says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. In other words, it's proven to be true. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. And a buckler is a shield. He is a shield, a protector to all those who trust him. God's way is perfect. Do you believe this? Do you trust this? 
Be careful to never be disappointed with the will of God. When you come to the four, come to a fork in the road in life, and you want to go right, but God says go left, do you trust his word? Or do you reason within yourself and go your own way? Can you trust that his will and his way is perfect for you? Even though you may not understand. You see, God knows us better than we know ourselves. And God has the power, the ability to see into our future when we cannot. Living in God's perfect will, doing so, then we can be at ease, no matter what we face in life. We can be at ease, knowing that whatever disappointment comes our way, we can rise above it all in victory, because God says so. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. If every child of God can speak from their heart and mean it, Father, not my will, but thine be done, then there will be total victory over every disappointment faced in life. Another great way to rise above disappointment is found in a short, simple verse. But yet, it carries deep meaning. And it's a verse, simple to understand, but it's a verse worth meditating upon and studying, letting it sink deep in your spirit to really understand what it's telling you. And it says a lot. Colossians 3, 2, set your affections, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Study that verse. Understand what the Lord is really trying to tell you. There's victory over disappointments in this one small verse. You see, this verse, this is what the early church did. They had to keep their eyes on Jesus continually because in that day, in their society, joining the church meant betrayal, persecution, and even death. To be a part of the early church, you had to be ready and willing to give all for the sake of Christ. And Jesus warned his followers what would come in the future when they started the church. In Matthew chapter 10, he told them, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Beware of men, for they will desire, for they will deliver you up to their councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Jesus went on to warn, as you go from city to city, you will be persecuted. You'll be betrayed by family, and many will, in your family will cause you to be put to death. This is disappointment. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Does this sound like an easy life? The Apostle Paul, he went on to write to the church in Romans chapter 8. As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. The early church rose above great disappointments by the power of Christ. How? How could they do so? By being rooted and grounded in divine love. Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 39. 
Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you possess divine love and it's rooted deep within you, no disappointment that you will face in this life will ever separate you from God. In the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul, leader of the Gentile church, shares with the Corinthians how as he journeys from nation to nation and city to city, an angel was sent by Satan to continually follow him, to stir up trouble, confusion, and great persecution. Paul reveals that three different times he prayed for deliverance from this angel of Satan, Finally, Paul received an answer from God. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Do you think that was the answer Paul was looking for? Paul could have been sorely disappointed in God and in this answer even to the point of stopping his ministry and walking away. Because by God's answer, he understood that the persecutions and troubles would keep coming, and they were severe. But Paul loved God deeply, and he trusted God completely. Can you say the same? So, with such deep-rooted love, Paul, he looked for the good in that revelation from God and found that by God's grace, he would have the strength to rise above every disappointment that he would face in the future. So instead of focusing on his disappointments and his weaknesses, he looked to the power of Christ that would flow to him through God's grace in those difficult times. And it continues in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Take pleasure? This is not human understanding at work. This is faith talk. This is trusting God with your whole heart. Paul did not shy away from his disappointments. He faced them knowing the power of Christ was his to be victorious over them. This revelation Paul received should reveal and show every child of God that you cannot pray all of your disappointments away. It's not going to happen. This life is not that easy. Our Heavenly Father expects his children to spiritually grow up, to be soldiers of the cross, to endure hardness as good soldiers and overcome. How? By all that he's provided through his grace. Through the divine blood of Jesus spilled at Calvary. Remember, child of God, you are commissioned to serve the Lord and build his kingdom, regardless of the opposition, regardless of the spiritual warfare you face. Have you ever considered God's disappointments? 
You know, the Bible is filled with disappointments for God. Thousands of years worth of disappointments for God. Humanity has caused God such trouble and grief. Have you considered if your life is a disappointment to God? Instead of being wrapped up in your own disappointments, have you considered whether or not you are disappointing God? Your lifestyle, your words, your obedience to Him or your lack of obedience to Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Do you understand? Do you live that way, that you are not your own? It's one thing to say it, to give mental assent to it, but do you live it? Is it right here? One great way to overcome disappointment, and truly this is, as a servant of the Lord, you who were bought with a price as a servant of the Lord, don't consider yourself. Don't consider yourself. You are a servant. Instead, with divine love, focus and strive to please God and never disappoint Him. And when you keep the focus there, what happens to you it doesn't matter. And it becomes easier to rise above the disappointments. Living by faith, you'll know God will take care of you as you take care in pleasing Him. Ever consider what you owe God for your life? From the day you were born, He wanted you to accept His glorious and eternal gift, Jesus Christ. Plus, many physical and financial gifts Stop for a minute and consider, will you honor His love gifts through your offerings and ties to this ministry? Every day and every hour, we work to bless others everywhere. Please join us and let God's smile be upon your life. For almost 50 years, the Ernest Angley Hour has delivered a message of complete deliverance. It's God's holiness or you'll never see the face of God. We have to let Him work it. We have to own His will. To be steadfast in Christ, it starts with you. If you don't have Jesus Christ, this is your opportunity. Watch more episodes of the Ernest Angley Hour on our YouTube channel. His heart is true and just.
kept the folded grave clothes where the body lay. Thine is the glory, is in conquering sun. And this is the victory over death you won. Led his church with gladness. Hymns of triumph sing. For the Lord now liveth, death has lost its sting. Thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. And this is the victory over death you won. Make us more than conquerors through thy precious blood. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. The sun has risen. Great song by the singing gospels. And because the sun has risen, we can have victory over life's disappointments. Taking you back to Grace Cathedral for the conclusion of the message. Hebrews chapter 11 says, Enoch pleased God, and the Lord took him to heaven alive. Doesn't talk about disappointments, troubles, trials. We know very little about Enoch's life. Very little. But we know enough. We know everything we need to know as to why God raptured him to heaven. Three words, he pleased God. When you can fulfill those three words, you're on your way. 
And to go by way to heaven, by way of the rapture, that's where your focus needs to be. Pleasing God. Not self, not family, not people. Pleasing God. And neither are you to focus on your disappointments. As Jesus said, watch and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape that which is coming upon the earth and to stand before the Son of Man. At this time, I want to take you to the Bible to examine how certain people handle disappointments. First, let's look at the difference between Job and his wife. Job knew how to face disappointments. His wife did not. God spoke to Job, spoke of Job in Job 1.8. Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Job was severely tested by Satan. He faced many disappointments. His cattle stolen, his servants killed, his sheep destroyed by fire. All of his children killed at one time. And then he was smitten with boils from head to toe. You ever try to put yourself in the life of a Bible character? Do you ever allow the Holy Spirit to usher you back in time? And maybe by your imagination or in your mind, put you right in the shoes of that character? Have you ever done that with Job? How would you respond? How would you react in light of such circumstances? Surely none of us have ever faced a trial like that. Yet the Bible says through it all, Job never sinned, nor did he charge God foolishly. Job's heart was full of God's love, and his mind was girded with truth. And he declared, though God slay me, yet will I trust him. Does this sound like a man defeated by disappointment? Job could have bowed to his disappointments and been defeated. His wife did. She couldn't handle it. And she turned on Job and God, telling Job, do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. Instead, Job rose above it all and declared, I'll bless God and live. And what happened in the end? God took the bad, and he worked it for good. And God raised up Job in victory, blessed him abundantly above what he had before. He was blessed above what he had before. His life proved Satan wrong. And his story has been told for thousands of years as a witness and a blessing to children of God. God took it, and he turned it for good. If you don't rise above life's disappointments through the Lord, then like Job's wife, in the heat of the moment, when you lack understanding, you're subject to say or do things that are displeasing to God. That sooner or later you will regret. Elijah the prophet, momentarily he gave in to disappointment as he sat under that juniper tree praying to God to die, to take his life. Now previously Elijah, he had won a great victory for God killed hundreds and hundreds of the prophets of Baal. But when the queen of Israel found out about it, she sent a messenger that she was going to have him killed. But at this time, 
being a man, the prophet of God was physically and mentally weakened, and he fled for the wilderness. Now he believes no one's left in Israel serving God. They all serve Baal. And God, I just want to die. Take my life. Fortunately, Elijah, he loved God and he lived close to God. And God knew his heart. And God, therefore, did not answer that prayer of disappointment. He would not take his life. Instead, God sent an angel to cook for him, to provide him water, then watch over him as he slept. And by the strength of that angel food, Elijah traveled many days' journey to the Mount of God. And God spoke to him there on the mountain, cleared his mind, revealed to him that 7,000 people in Israel still served God, and then sent Elijah forth to do his will. And at the end of his life, God took the bad and worked good. Because Elijah did not die as he requested of God. Instead, God took him to heaven alive in a chariot of fire. Here's the key in overcoming disappointments and being victorious. Right here. When a person will trust and obey God, he will turn their disappointments to victory. It's as simple as that. When a person will trust and obey God completely, he will turn it for their good, eventually. Disappointment almost cost Naaman, the leper, his miracle. Naaman was the captain of the host of Syria, he came to Elijah, the prophet, seeking a miracle for his leprosy. However, Elisha would not even come to the door to see Naaman. Instead, he sent a messenger, giving Naaman instruction of what to do and how to receive his miracle, telling him, go and wash in the river Jordan seven times, and thy flesh will come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Unfortunately for Naaman, he had other, other ideas about how the miracle should take place. And he was a man of leadership and authority who was used to getting his own way. And it showed up. Because Naaman refused to obey. And he declared that he thought Elisha should come out and see him, strike the place with the power of God, and he wanted to go bathe in the rivers of Damascus instead of muddy Jordan. So he went away mad. Fortunately for Naaman, his servants reasoned with him and convinced him to obey the instructions of the prophet. And when he did, the miracle took place, and his attitude changed. How many times have people been robbed of blessings, miracles, and healings because their mind was fixed on a certain way of how God should move for them. Believing it has to happen this way, their way, instead of trusting in God and letting Him work His way. You know, in Mark chapter 16, Jesus says, a believer would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Simple instruction. Yet why do people try and add to that? Jesus said, lay hand on the sick, they would recover. Take Jesus at his word. Jesus didn't say that there would have to be many words spoken as the hand was laid upon him. He didn't say how long that hand had to be there. Nor did he mention that once the hand was laid upon him, you will have no more symptoms, no more pain. He simply said, a believer would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Take God at his word. After hands are laid upon you according to the word of God, if you have another pain or symptom, don't be disappointed. 
Don't question God. Don't let the devil rob you. Take God at his word. Trust. Understand maybe your faith is being tested. So keep your trust in the word of God, and guess what? You will recover. You will come out. Naaman at first thought he knew better than God, and he wanted it his way. You know, there are many people in the world today just like Naaman. Oh, they might not confess it verbally, but their actions speak loud and clear. Rather than waiting upon the Lord and his will, they take matters into their own hands instead. And that's when the trouble starts. And then God gets blamed for it many times. And he had nothing to do with it. Remember, child of God, you are a free moral agent. And your free choice did not end at Calvary. Your free choice will continue until you enter into eternity. You can choose to submit to the will of God for your life. Doing so, you can know and be assured that all the tribulation that comes against you, God will take responsibility to enable you to rise above those disappointments and then work good for it. Or you could choose to take matters into your own hands. Make your own choices and decisions. But when trouble comes, don't blame God. When trouble comes, he takes no responsibility. As a son of man, Jesus faced many tribulations and troubles. Think about it. The Son of God, the holiest, the purest, the most well-pleasing to the Father. But yet Isaiah said this of his life. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was despised and rejected of men. He came unto his own, and they received him not. Disappointment. But yet, he too overcame it all. And today, by Jesus Christ and his divine sacrifice of blood, you and I can overcome. No matter what comes our way in this life. Yes, in this world, there will be many troubles many tribulations and disappointments. But with Jesus in your life, as you trust and obey him, you can be of good cheer, knowing that you have his power available to you to rise above it all, and he will work good from it. Friend, watching this sermon tonight, have you been disappointed with your life? Have you come so far in life and it, life just isn't what you expected it to be? You may be one watching and you're thinking about committing suicide because life has been that disappointing. Well, friend, I'm here to tell you now through Jesus Christ and his divine blood those disappointments can be broken. Those disappointments in due season can turn into victories. Jesus, there's no other man by whom you can be saved. There's no other man by whom all of your needs can be supplied. And those disappointments turn into victories through Jesus Christ and his divine blood sacrifice. I want you to pray this prayer with me now. Give Jesus a chance. Prove him. Let him do for you what no other power can do. Say, oh God. And everyone here, say this prayer. Whether you need to say it or not, say it. Say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me. For all of my sin, 
I failed you, God, and I'm so sorry. But no more, for I have come home. And I believe there's power in the blood of your son, Jesus, that will wash away all of my sin and deliver me from the disappointments in my life. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, dear Jesus. And amen. And friend, if you meant that prayer, Jesus, he is yours. And he promised to never leave you or forsake you. He promised to carry all of your burdens. He promised to give rest unto your soul. And with the gift of salvation and eternal life, by the power and the blood, you can be healed in your body. The needs you have, the bondages you have, those needs can be supplied, those bondages broken. It's all through the blood. And as I said in this sermon tonight, a believer will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's the word of Jesus. And friend, I am the Lord's believer. Reverend Steve is the Lord's believer. Many believers are here tonight, and we're here and ready to agree with you for whatever that need is. So with your trust in Jesus, obey his word. Put your hand against mine on the screen. That's a form of laying on of hands, as Jesus said. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the people before you tonight. Lord, many are sick in body. Many have a bondage in their life. They've been burdened many a year, unable to be free. But Lord, we know that by the power in the blood of Jesus, there is total freedom, total liberty. By the power in the blood of Jesus, there is healing and life. And Lord, in the holy blood name of Jesus, I call that healing to the people now. Heal in the blood name of Jesus. Heal in the blood name of Jesus. And Lord, let the healing virtue from the blood flow to them now. And Lord, according to your word, make them well, that they recover for your honor and glory and make them a testimony for you in the name of Jesus. And amen. And friend, you watch every sign of improvement, whether it's immediately or in the future. And glorify God as you recover. Glorify God and praise Jesus for the blood, for the promises of healing and deliverance. And let the Lord know you'll be a testimony and a witness for him. And we will rejoice in the Lord with you. And those of you here tonight who are in need of prayer at this time, you can get up, go over to the side over here. And I'll be over there to minister unto you. And the rest of you, I'd like you to stand to your feet, come to the altar tonight. And you who are out there, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Well, friend, if you invited Jesus into your heart, if you received the gift of salvation, now you are eligible. You can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The third person, the Holy Ghost living within you, God's gift to you, according to Acts chapter 2. Receive this gift tonight. And where you are, stand to your feet. Lift up your hands before the Lord, and I'm going to call an anointing down upon you, and friends, start praising the Lord, just glorifying Him, lifting up praises where you're at, praising Him, glorifying Him. And as you praise the Lord, as you glorify Him, that anointing will move in, the Holy Ghost will move in, and He will come in, and He will baptize you. He will baptize you, and you'll know it because He'll take over your tongue, and He'll speak in another language, an unknown language, signifying He has taken control. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the people before you now. God, anoint them. In the name of Jesus, I call this anointing down. In the name of Jesus, I call this anointing down. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. 
friend, those of you who prayed along with me at the end, I'm going to continue to believe with you, to expect God to meet your need, watch every sign of improvement, and let us know what God has done for you. If you enjoy this program, if you've received a miracle, a healing, or a blessing to this Jesus ministry, tell us about it. You can send your testimony by email. Send it to testimonies at ernestangely.org. And I'd also like to invite you to be with us in person for our services at Grace Cathedral. We always welcome visitors to worship the Lord with us. And if you're in need of prayer, maybe you have a friend or a loved one who's in need of prayer. Bring them to service Friday night, 7 p.m. It's a wonderful time in the Lord. At the end of the service, you will have an opportunity to receive prayer, whether by me or Reverend Steve Millar, we will lay hands on you according to the word of God. Jesus said a believer would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Also, Sunday, we have two services at 10 a.m., 7 p.m. The word of God always goes forth through testifying, preaching, music, and singing. Just, it's a wonderful time in the Lord. And if you're unable to be with us in person, well, you can always join the service by way of the live stream. You can connect with the live stream on our Facebook page, Ernest Angeli Ministries, or our YouTube channel, at Ernest Angeli Ministries. And when you join the live stream of the service on our YouTube channel, be sure to become a subscriber and click the notification bell. That way you will be notified every time a live stream of the service is about to start. Plus, we're always adding new content, such as music and singing videos by our performers. The Ernest Angley Hour, we always post that on our YouTube channel. Just a lot of good content that can bless your soul. And don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook page. Join us on Instagram. We're adding new content all of the time. Well, friend, I trust this program today was a blessing, that this message will help you overcome life's disappointments. And always remember, no one's ever loved you like Jesus loves you. No one's ever cared for you like Jesus cares for you. Look forward to seeing you next week. Every Friday on the Ernest Angie Ministries Facebook page, we invite the nations of the world to send in their prayer requests, and we cover them with prayer during our Friday night miracle service. People are responding by the thousands with great testimonies of blessing and deliverance. Need a job? Post a message. Have a sick child? Post a message. In despair? Post a message. Seeking the divine will of God? Battling drugs and alcohol? Remember, Jesus said all things are possible to him that believeth. Claim your miracle by joining us in prayer and then send us your praise report with a comment. It is that simple if you believe.